My name is Charles Williams. What I do for a living is I'm a personal trainer uh, in Huntington, Long Island, and I've been doing that for about 21 years. So how I got into it, I had been doing a bodybuilding, you know, like I said, I was 170 pounds, six pack and everything. I wanted to get into some compound lifts, deadlift, squat, bench press. At the time, I didn't even know what a press was. Uh, and I realized that 17 years worth of personal training, I did not know how to deadlift, I didn't know how to squat, and I didn't even know what a press was. Uh, so I hunted around YouTube and then everything kind of got me affiliated with starting strength and, you know, looking at the instructional videos and reading material, I realized I had no idea how to squat, deadlift, and, and even what a press was. But the linear progression, the whole model and everything like that was very simple. It was easy to follow and I could apply it, adding five pounds to the bar every single time. And I noticed that I got stronger. I got stronger physically. I got stronger mentally. I got stronger emotionally. Hell, I even got uh, stronger uh, spiritually, you know. And it was at that time I started applying that method to my clients. Well, at first I was very afraid to have them do any kind of starting strength because of starting strength. I was a very creative trainer. You know, I would develop exercises. Uh, and I was afraid that if I had them just do a squat, deadlift, press, and a bench, or maybe a power clean or something like that, that, that they, my whole roster was going to fall apart. They were looking for the new and exciting and different. Uh, and I decided I was going to go through with it anyway. I was going to have them teach them the linear progressions. And what happened was my schedule got busier. There was a waiting list. People wanted to get in. They liked the idea of getting stronger, apparently. And they liked the idea of the simple, straightforward method of teaching them. Now, at the time, I was still learning how to do it. But it was enough for them to understand that it was authentic and real. And they were indeed getting stronger. So what did it do for me professionally it was it was really an eye opener because uh, for the first time ever, I could be authentic to my clients. I could be honest with my clients. I could be real rather than pulling all sorts of fantastic hocus pocus workouts out of thin air for entertainment purposes. I could give them something for real and I could have actually empirical data to show them that they got stronger. They didn't even need the empirical data. They knew it right from the beginning that they were getting stronger. Well, that's, yeah. So how did I, it made me feel is I didn't feel fraudulent. And that's an awful feeling for someone like me. I'm not a shyster. I don't like giving people, you know, smoke and mirrors. And when I was giving people the starting strength method, you know, it was, it was much more authentic. And that felt good. That felt great. It felt real, you know, and I saw myself develop as a trainer with the client and they, and they saw me develop too, you know, and that's why I'm here so I can get to that mastery level. A mom of 48 come in, all she did was yoga and, you know, her squat went from 95 pounds to 225 and her whole attitude changed. It wasn't about here, here, here anymore. It was about putting numbers on the bar. It was empowering for her, which was empowering for me. And that's why I did it, because the more, the more empowered they became, the more I, I gained from, the more experience, the more authenticity I had. You know, and that's important. You know, and that's, it came to a point when all I wanted to do was just that. If you didn't want to do starting strength, then I didn't want to train you. <laughs> you know, if you wanted to do yoga or something like that, or you wanted to fling around some dumbbells, you want to do what that trainer was doing with battle ropes or something like that, then go train with them. Because the money's not worth the bullshit. The money's not worth the bullshit, and that's true. Well, you know, the current role is to be a, a part of a functioning system that kind of promotes the same thing. Getting people stronger, authentically, with empirical data. Uh, the current role, I mean, the way it is now, it's more of a salesmanship. You know, we'll sell you anything just to get you in the door. It doesn't matter even if you come to the gym. It doesn't matter if you even show up. It doesn't matter how many weights you lift or what you do. It's whatever you like, we'll give it to you. And as long as you come back. As long as you come back. And it's like Planet Fitness. It doesn't matter. I mean, you just sell as many people as you can. If, you, if everyone came to the gym at once, it would be overflowing with, you know, you hope you don't come back. So, you know, being a personal trainer in that environment is, is depleting. 
It's very depleting. It's very, uh, it's like sucks the energy out of you. Well, I've been doing that for 21 years. I've been mean, started the training in 2000. I'm 42 now. Um, you know, I'm, 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 I like the fact that I have changed people's perspective on strength, especially that. I've changed people's uh, physical appearance and physical capacity through strength training, but it's still kind of hard to get to them in the current fitness industry. Um, that's why I'm here, you know, because this is to be a, my role in this and to grow through it would be a lot more impactful, you know. I would have a lot more impact on the people whom I train in this environment, you know, and I would rather leave some marks on the world rather than the world leaving some marks on me, <laughs> you know, and, and it makes, it makes doing your thing, it makes doing your thing a lot more meaningful when you're actually doing shit. Well, I'll tell you this, I've been at this gym currently in Huntington for the past five years, four, four or five years since they opened up there, and I am the only trainer, including all the manager that's still in the gym since that time. They've gone through at least a whole bunch of trainers, a whole three, three generations of management and everything. I'm the, I'm the only one still there. So, you know, they're, both, they're mostly young, mostly in their 20s, 21, 24, 28. And they just, you know, they like to work out. They like to work out. They probably look good, you know. So they just like to train people. You know, the front desk people probably aren't getting paid a hell of a lot and they don't have much work ethic. You know, and the, and the gym probably hit its peak somewhere like that. So the sale is not going to really grow as much more than that, especially after COVID. So, you know, the management's probably going through their own cycle. They'll find something better here and there. But I am still the person there that's been there since August. Uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, November of 2017. Well, I had to take an honest look at myself and realize my squat was nothing more than 135, and I had to go five pounds up from there. And you were... As a con this, is, this, is, this is the thing with starting strength. It's a constant, honest assessment of yourself, you know? It's a constant pushing yourself into a boundary of unknown. And if you, don't, if you have a false perception of yourself, you're not going to go very far. You're not going to go very far in your training. You're not going to go very far in your career. You're not going to go very far in a relationship. You're not going to go far in anything. And I mean, it's it's hard, it's hard, and easy doesn't work. I heard that somewhere before, but even that goes for any relationship or anything like that. Constantly, you know, having to look at yourself honestly. And I knew that, you know, the training that I was doing prior was dishonest, and the starting strength that I'm doing with my clients currently could be better. Right? It could be better. I mean, I'm 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 certainly a lot better than I was, but I I'm not as good as I could be. And I need to be in that environment. How you, you, you trained me in my squat today. Well, again, it was that honest look of what I was doing wrong. Hey, I'm freaking bow-legged. You know, so I had to, you know, set my knees earlier than I had been doing. You know, I've been driving the hips back and then the knees would kind of slide underneath. And, you know, the, they tend to shove out a lot because, you know, the bow-leggedness. And, and I have to look at that. I have to look at that. I, have to, I actually have to put a camera, <laughs> you know, behind me and look at myself squatting wrong in order to squat right. And, you know, I don't want to look at myself squatting wrong, but I have to, you know. And that's, that's the honest assessment of yourself. You know, I can, I, it's easy for me to sit here and say, well, I can squat 405. Yay. But I was struggling with 225 today because my knees were shoving out and they were not being set and there was a lot of knee slide going on. So I had to stick with 225 today and listen to what you had to say and fix that shit. So that's, again, that, that's, that's what's really great about the honesty and the integrity of the program. There's no ego involved. You know, I can squat 405 some other time, but right now today is 225. Listen to what Brent's telling you about your knees. He said, oh, what's some of shit going on with his ankles or his knees or something? <laughs> like, I know. <laughs> but that's, that's what I like about it. You know? And I, I was listening to Jordan today, and it's just this... The communication is so authentic. I, mean, I was listening to um, Jane talk. It's this very authentic cueing. You know, no, no bullshit. Just authentic cueing. It's not mean. It's just real. And I like that. You know? I'm not going to sit here and just do rah-rah and clap my hands and say, yeah. I mean, I've seen plenty of trainers who don't know what the hell they're doing that would sit there and have them do a high bar squat, and even that was looking terrible, and they were like, yeah, good job. That's not real. 
you know. So it's that's what I got from the squat today. I'm glad the breasts look good. <laughs> breasts thank look you. great. Hey, thank God for that. <laughs> At least I woke up with something. <laughs> <laughs> that you have done in your training. Program. Oh man, yes. <laughs> I did a lot of silly shit. Um, well, we. I, I'll tell you what I told you know yesterday, and this was uh, I would have uh, said client who played soccer. He was in his fifties. And he would stand on one foot on each Bosu ball, okay, because he's working his balance and his score, his core stability, or something like that. And he take the battle ropes and he start working the battle ropes and maybe even jump off the Bosu ball back onto the Bosu ball. And of course, he would ask, "Why am I doing this?" <laughs> and I'd have to come up with the answer, of, you know, proprioception or you know, um, core stability balance or how this translates to the soccer field but that was that was the silly that was some one, some of the silliest shit that i did now if they ask me why i'm doing the squat it's pretty easy to answer that you know it's pretty easy to answer about the squat being general strength and it's easy to show them when you squat goes from 135 to 205 that it's you know and they, and they feel it anyway 